this was the video demonstration for the inferior alveolar nerve block uh, before giving the inferior, inferior alveolar nerve block you need to know what are the landmarks for the inferior alveolar nerve block uh, this is the coronoid notch the one which is the clearly seen over the pink color uh, it is a small concavity defect over the external oblique ridge region uh, you need to palpate the coronoid notch with your in thumb finger okay then after that uh, you can see over here uh, this is the lingua the small extension over this region uh, that is the point where your inferior alveolar now will come and enter into the inferior alveolar now foramen okay this is the second landmark and then third landmark will be your occlusal surface of the tooth that is uh, whenever you are de delivering the local anesthesia the entry of the needle should be around 6 to 8 mm above the occlusal surface of the teeth. In few textbooks, they will give corona notch also as one of the landmark for the inferior alveolar now block technique. Okay, coming to the Halstead technique. In the Halstead technique, what we need to do is uh, we need to first palpate the corona notch region. Then all your three fingers has to support the posterior border of the mandible. Once you palpate the notch, okay, then uh, you take your needle and then the needle position is very important. Here you, you need to remind three parameters. One is your height of the needle insertion, then is your anterior posterior positioning of the needle, then is the depth of the needle. These three parameters play a key role, okay. First, we let us go one by one parameter. One is height of the needle insertion. How you determine what is the height of the needle insertion? First, you palpate the coronoid notch. Okay, the, so I have I have palpated the coronoid notch. Now, consider my imaginary line over the thumb finger, and this line has to be six to eight mm above the occlusal plane of the molars. That determines your height. Next comes is the anterior posterior position of the syringe. This is the anterior posterior position. Usually, this will lie over the premolars or on the molar that determines the anterior posterior position now last thing is depth of the syringe that has to go okay the position of the lingua and inferior alveolar now foramen will vary from the patient to patient usually in the children of age range around 3 to 4 years this position will be below the occlusal surface of the molars so in those patients you need to give below the occlusal surface that means your point of insertion and deposition will be below the occlusal surface of the molars whereas in an age range of 6 to 8 years pediatric patients then you can consider equivalent to the height of the occlusion and deliver the solution whereas when it comes to the adults usually this position ranges 6 to 8 mm above the mandibular occlusal plane and so your point of insertion should be above 6 to 8 mm above the occlusal plane uh, now we have seen the landmarks uh, of inferior alveolar nerve block. Now let us see the technique how we are going to do. First palpate the coronoid notch and then the three fingers of your uh, will be supporting the posterior border of the mandible. The distance of this two, uh, the distance you need to imagine and this will be almost lying two thirds. Two thirds distance from your anterior and posterior borders. So the on the uh, occlusal surface of the premolars you like I said horizontal uh, imaginary line then anterior posterior position and depth I have already mentioned those things you consider from the premolars and, and point of entry will be in the tergomandibular bracket then you go posteriorly and touch the bone before uh, once you feel the bone try to aspirate and then deliver the 1.5 to 1.8 ml of solution over there once you gave the inferior nerve block, then you come onto the same side, then retract the syringe half away and then deliver around 0.5 to 0.8 ml of, uh, un to anesthetize the lingual nerve. Once this is done, completely retract the syringe out. Again then distal to the distal molar that is present, uh, then on touch the feel the bone and then deliver around 0.3 to 0.5 ml of solution. To anesthetize the long buccal nerve block. Good morning, everyone. Myself, I am Dr. Krishna, currently working as resident in Kavita Dental College. Today, I will be demonstrating the inferior alveolar nerve block.
The basic landmarks for the interior alveolar nerve block are your coronoid notch. Firstly, you need to palpate the coronoid notch, uh, which is over here. Coronoid notch is a depression over this region, which is the continuation of the external oblique ridge. This region will be your coronoid notch, and here is your tergomandibular raphe, which is running upwards. These are the fibers which will originate from the posterior surface of the third molar and will running upwards towards the hamular notch region. And uh, once you palpate the corona notch, then what you need to do is you need to have three parameters in your mind. One is height, anterior posterior positioning of the needle, and depth of the needle uh, insertion. Okay, these three points. This will be forming your ramus region. Okay, this is the posterior border of the ramus. So here all your index finger as well as the middle finger and all the fingers has to be supporting the posterior border of the mandible. Then once you need to palpate the coronoid notch over here, go closer and make the tissue start over this side. Okay. Once after you palpating this region, then uh, an imaginary line over the thumb region has to be marked. This imaginary line will guide you in attaining the height of the needle. Like, see, you can see here that ergomandibular raphe is running upwards, and a line on the mid of the my uh, thumb finger will be an imaginary line, and it has to be above the 8 to 10 mm above the occlusal plane, or you can consider like 6 to 10 mm above the occlusal plane of the last tooth. So, this will be my point of needle insertion. Okay. This will be my point of needle insertion and I will be going on the opposite side of the premolar. Here you can see this will be the opposite side of the premolar. So my point of insertion will be here and I will be going on the opposite side. Now I am inserting the needle and hitting the bone. Hitting the bone is very important because it will exactly guide you the point where the lingua is. Once you hit the bone, do the aspiration. Aspiration was negative. So make sure you are hitting the bone. Again turn the needle once and again re-aspirate. Re-aspiration was negative. Now I will be delivering around 1.2 to 1.5 ml of solution over this region. Once it is done, I will be coming back onto the same side. Again re-aspirate then deliver around 1.5 ml of solution over this site. Ok, once this is done, just retract the needle and secure it. Once after you have given the inferior alveolar nerve block and lingual nerve block, you need to give the long buccal nerve block. Long buccal nerve block was very easier and simpler technique. Because uh, and also it, it has higher success rate because a long buccal nerve block will be in your soft tissue. The technique is uh, you need to insert your needle distal to the distal molar and hit the bone, then aspirate over the side and then deposit around 0.5 ml to 0.8 ml of solution there. Okay, that's it. Close, ma'am. Ma'am, what are the areas you are feeling numbness? Okay, then yes, uh, one side of the tongue are you feeling numbness like a bit of heaviness over the region? Yes, okay, then this region you are having a bit of numbness till this anterior tooth region. Huh? Okay, then I will uh, check ma'am whether you are having any pain or not. Okay, are you feeling any pain here or feeling of pressure? No, some instrument was placed, no. right. This side will will examine. So this side you are having pain, and this side you are feeling just some instrument was placed, right? Yes. Yeah, 